Yes, I had a normal, normal pregnancy. I didn't have, didn't even have vomitings or morning sickness, nothing like that. I used to still exercise at work and everything normal. Having a child born with any kind of medical condition is difficult for parents to fathom. In fact, it's the scenario that soon-to-be parents dread. 21-year-old Rosalind Reed is one of many mothers who've had this experience. Her 20-month-old daughter, Elise, was born with a congenital disorder. When I delivered her about a couple of hours after she wanted to feed and then I gave her my breast and she was just making this, you know, that mm -hmm. song like that. It made a song like she's hungry, but then I asked the doctor, I told her that my nipple feel funny, like she was not gripping it. Mm -hmm. So she took her and for like almost half an hour to an hour, and then when she came back, she came back with a bulb in her hand, and I asked her what was it for, and she told me that she had a cleft in her mouth. A cleft palate is a birth defect where the roof of the baby's mouth, the palate, doesn't develop normally during a pregnancy, which means the child is born with an opening or a cleft in the roof of the mouth. For this young mother, it meant a great deal of additional care for her only child. Me sleepless nights, long days. Um, I used to just have to stay up with her and if I'm feeding her in the night, I would have to check her. Sometimes I would just get up and be suctioning her nose, like just like a mother's instinct. Rosalind says the most difficult part of managing Elise's care is keeping her at her proper weight, a common side effect for children with cleft palate. Unfortunately, by the very nature of the cleft palate, the child the gaining weight for the child is difficult because the child uh, ch chokes on the milk. In the first year of life, the milk, the food primarily is liquid uh, mm -hmm. through, a, through a bottle, and that causes a lot of choking. It causes, um, they have some special nipples with a false ceiling on it to create a, a seal on the roof of the mouth. So babies who have cleft palate, sometimes we as physicians or the nurses have to take time out and teach the mother what position to feed the baby. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we use some specialized nipples or even some specialized formulas to, to assist the baby to gain weight. Luckily, the deformity can be treated. There are medical missions that frequently visit Belize to conduct the specialized surgeries. However, Elise has not been able to gain sufficient weight to have the surgery done. She has been going with this group for, from she was three months. Mm -hmm. And so every time we go, because she's underweight, we cannot get the surgery done. Mm -hmm. And um, they told me in October, however, they are coming early. So when I got the call, it was like, finally, I, mm -hmm. I, I really want her to do it and get over with that part of it yeah. so that we can only focus on one thing. That one thing is bringing Elise back up to speed with her developmental milestones, another side effect for cleft palate. At 20 months, Elise is not able to walk or talk. When she's standing, her hands would go way to the back and she did funny little actions with the right hand that put me to start questioning it more. Many times cleft palate is part of a syndrome. And so if the cleft palate is part of a syndrome, then you will have other findings. You will notice that the child at six months will not reach what we refer to as the developmental milestones. When the child is one, the child won't be able to walk. You will notice some speech delay. Um, you will notice other findings as the child gets a little older towards one or two years. From the first time I went to see Dr. Osado and he told me, you know, work her out, do different stuff with her and he referred me to Care Belize. Mm -hmm. And from then, she was about eight to nine mm -hmm. months. Okay. And we were, always, we were already doing therapy with her, so now that I just found this out, it's like she has something over it because she was already doing the therapy. Rosalind and Elise are now looking forward to an upcoming pediatric clinic this weekend being organized by the World Pediatric Project, Ministry of Health, and Friends of Pediatric with high hopes that Elise will finally be of sufficient weight to be able to have her surgery. In the meantime, her strong support system and persistence keeps her motivated. 
I honestly I just pray to God every day. I take her to church. We go to church sometimes, and I do. I have my family support like a hundred percent. My mom used to cry more than me for her. Mm -hmm. So um, I just have just family support, I guess. My advice to them is just be. As you said, persistent, try every little thing. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. Oh, I went up to having a dollar to travel just because I wanted to make sure everything is okay. Even if you see the equipment for the, for the therapy is expensive, get it. Because at the ending of the day, she will be more, the, per, the baby will be more comfortable in the home doing the therapy. Yeah. And just be strong. If you have family support, there is nothing else that can hold you back.